We're live on the air, so don't say any Fs and stuff. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys because they're still here. Oh, Nobody's you're got... not a cop. No, no, you're not. Think I don't love my daughter or something. Like you're holier What's happening? How's it going? Welcome. Welcome. I'm your host, Joshua Dean. It's good to be here. Good to see you. Thank you guys for making the lab a part of your day. A fantastic Live show. from the MBD Production Studios, you're in the lab with your host, Joshua Diaz. There is no investigation. This boy has. There is not, really? This, this wow, young man. That's what it is for me. I sound like I'm in a tunnel. Do I? That's interesting. Hold on one second. Uh, is that better? Hold on. Is that better? Is that is that better? Sorry about that. All right. So that should be. <laughs> All right. Good deal. Um, how's everybody doing? Welcome to the lab. I'm your host, Joshua Diaz. It's great to be here. Good to see you all. And um, we got a special guest in the house today. You may know him from his channel here on YouTube, uh, the interview room. You may know him from his many appearances on Fox News, Nancy Grace, Oprah, Geraldo. I don't know about Geraldo. I, I I think I made Geraldo up. Did you did you ever do Geraldo? I never did Geraldo. You should have. <laughs> yeah, you, you should have did Geraldo. But he did he never did Geraldo. I, I figured you were a Al Capone's uh vault kind of guy. You know, you probably watched that whole thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was all over that show. Yeah, I was watching it. <laughs> Glued to it. Yeah. Right yeah, in the nut house. Remember the hospital that he did years yeah, ago? I do. Yeah. Geraldo's one of my favorites because he literally stands on the edge of the beach during hurricanes and like he almost dies like twice a year during these hurricanes. He loves to test fate. He's it's the mustache, really. It was mandatory equipment back in those days. The old stash. Stash a Rooney. Well he never got I don't think he ever got rid of it. Yeah, all your lab rats. Great to see you guys. It's so yeah. fun always when you send me an invite, like you know, it's so great to always come over and say hi. How you be? I'm great, man. I'm 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 doing well and, and I'm happy uh, that you're here. Thank you for taking the time to be here with uh with us and um we uh appreciate that. You um you're a busy guy when you're not floating in the pool. You know, and when I am floating in the pool, it is for a brief moment. Right. Because what floats must sink. And you know what I look like, so I sink rather rapidly. Which is which is weird because like you would think that you'd be more buoyant. I am. I am actually. I'm working on that currently. I could you see when you're under the water. People would mistake you for a beaver because your hair is st just sticking up right there. And we kind of oh, yeah. both got the fluff going on well, today. I've got, I've got a natural calic here. Hang on, let me let me see if I can. Nice. All my all the all the folks that cut my hair, they're like, you know, you have a calic. <laughs> really? You probably heard that since you were a little kid. Right? I didn't know that. When did that happen? Who lets <laughs> cows lick them? You know what time did that happen? So as a, so, what's the point of this? So as a kid, 
if a cow licks your lick. your hair, it's never going to go back the same way. Is that the point? Are you saying? Uh, are you saying a bunch of cows were licking my hair? <laughs> well, I mean, now you said you had a cow lick. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know, <laughs> but I probably did and didn't even realize it. You had a bunch of cows with. licking your hair. Can you hear my air conditioner? Not really. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. Can I tell you? Can I tell your audience what happened? Please do. So uh, we have two air conditioners on the airstream here. And, of course, you know, Josh sends me this note. Hey, you know, let's catch up. I'm like, yeah, sure. What's going on? He said, well, you know, come on. Would you come on the show? And you got time? I said, yeah, of course. For you, anything. And so then I'm like, Karen, did you, do you hear the other air conditioner? Uh, no. So basically the air conditioner is kaputs, one of them on the front. They're fixing it tomorrow. Right. So I have to have this, you know, e uh, you know, Elon Musk rocket ship above my head here. And I yeah. apologize. So to your audience, if uh, if you hear anything, that's that's all you're hearing. So I'll mute out in between comments. That's hey, you know what? It's not a problem. It, uh, if you t if you were to turn that air conditioning off, you would be sweating like uh no tomorrow yeah it wouldn't be good for budzo no no, no absolutely we could give us an update how's he doing uh you know what he's uh he's doing good is still on his medication but you know the hot the heat you know a little small dogs it really it works them so yeah yeah, they don't. Small dogs don't do well in heat. They don't do well in like freezing cold either. I mean, for him, I remember when it was snowing here, and I let Macho run outside, and he got his little paws on that. As soon as he hit it, he was like, "I'm out of here. This sucks." And but so yeah, little dogs especially. But uh, and, and Buddy's a hyper one himself. Yeah, he's a nut job. Does that ever does that ever make it it act up his um, agita? Yeah, I can't buy him new toys because he will, you know, he'll just grab that toy for like an hour and it's nonstop. I mean, his right. heart will just get to a place where it's it's not good. So, right. we, you know, we just kind of pace him. We sure love this little guy, though, but he's you can tell he's had a little heart issue and he's, you know, you, we just pray every day we can keep him. So. Chris, I, I, let's get down to it, man. Uh, there's, I think there's a lot to discuss here. And, and, um, you know, I know that, I know that you do keep your ear open to the summer wells case and you kind of listen and, and, you know, we talk, and by the way, folks, uh, you know, people constantly, is this, is Chris still look, we're under the impression that the investigators are doing their job and, and, you know, so yeah, we we de it's something that we definitely talk about all the time. You know, and I think uh, that you know we're we're so close to the two year mark. I figured that we could kind of just go back over some of the stuff. And what's kind of trending now is this thought that there's a grand jury that's convening uh, within that's supposed to convene on June 1st. And I think that there's a little bit of misinformation that goes along with how these grand juries actually work. And I was going to talk a little bit about that tonight and kind of get your point of view from it as well as somebody who I'm sure that you've, you know, a bit about grand juries. Um, now, on the docket, they put, you know, the grand juries convened. Uh, it's a couple times a year in most places. And what happens is it's typically stuff that's on the docket. Okay. Stuff that they've kind of had lined up and they go over a list of different things. Like they don't, it's not just one specific incident. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, there's a whole, it all depends what they're looking into, but yes, there's a whole series of cases they could take on at the same time. Right. Typically in high profile cases, and I would consider Summerwells' case a high 
profile case. It's received a lot of media attention on the internet. Not, it's also been on Dr. Phil. Uh, I mean, it's kind of been talked about everywhere. The people from all over the world know about this case. So if, if we look at reasons why, and by the way, instead of just arresting somebody and then having the preliminary hearings and things like that, we saw this in the Koberger case where he waived his right to the prelim and they're like, okay, well, let's backdoor him with a secret grand jury. Good move, by the way. Very smart, very clever. Yep. Um, and uh, so he was like, well, I don't want to, you know, I, I wait, what did he say? He waived his right to a, uh, a speedy preliminary. Yeah, they stand. They call it standing silent. Yeah, he stood silent, which is just another way for him to be weird about it all. Um, well, there's a lot of psychology behind that, so, but we can get into that later. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, to, I'm definitely. Let me take that because we did start already. I just wanted to be clear that people knew that we started. The starting soon banner was rolling. So anyway, let me. Show this here for a minute. Okay. So these are reasons. Let me see. We'll throw it up here. <clears throat> okay. So the reasons for choosing a grand jury over preliminary hearing, high public interest in the case. This is what we have here. High public interest in the case. Okay. That's just how it is. These are secret grand juries. These aren't on the docket grand juries. Okay. The fact that a preliminary hearing would take more time than a grand jury hearing, uh, the necessity for calling children or timid witnesses who would be subject to cross-examination at a pre pre preliminary hearing, the ability to test a witness before trial or before a jury, and where the secrecy of the grand jury may allow defendants to be charged and taken into custody before they can pose potential danger to a witness safety or flee from the jurisdiction uh, of uh, wherever they're being looked at. So nobody would know. Nobody's going to know when the grand jury convenes. Nobody knows if a grand jury is convening. Let me play a little something for you as well to refresh our memory from the district attorney in Hawkins County. It's a, a case that has uh, implications of uh, the legal system and the law, but it's, it, you couldn't classify it right now as there's no criminal charges been filed. Summer's older brothers were put into CPS custody last July, but no charges have been filed over their removal. However, their father, Don Wells, is serving time in the Hawkins County Jail over DUI and violation of probation charges. Shocking. This is a very complicated issue um, that has been made more complicated by the, the, the players in this drama. So, who would that be? Who do you think he's talking about? Is he talking about me? Is he talking about... Who's he talking about? He's talking about the people that are around the circle of the investigation. So he could be talking about the kids in, in terms of what they may or may not know. And there could be a lot of uh, forensic interviewing going on. There could be other things going on about health issues and those kind of things. Those things make a case complicated. You know, you got to clear that up and you got to make sure that the uh, you know, for bullet number three, for an example, they're uh, for calling children or timid witnesses. Uh, you have to get the witnesses into a frame of mind whereby they could be called to bullet number three. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, bullet number five down there so that nobody else could, you know, get involved or harm them in any way, shape or form. So I always found that interesting that he frames it that way because... He wants to say, but he can't say. And you can hear that very clearly in how he's presenting it. He's very careful. He's very, it, it, the way that he presents it is, look, I'm not going to say any names, but this is, 
And and he says this as well. This is a very complicated situation, made even more complicated by the players and the drama, as he calls it. That's not necessarily the media. That's not necessarily. It, it could be as well. I'm sure that it had, but it's that's not who he's talking about. He's talking about the people that are involved in the case. The 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 and if anybody disputes that i i i don't i don't know that i could have a, a that debate with somebody i mean let's 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 figure this out right i mean let's let's just honestly do you think the district attorney pays attention to social media no for summer wells no honestly yeah no, i mean no. so so that's not who he's talking about he's he he, you know he's not talking about that at all he's talking about the nuances the moving parts uh, with inside the inner workings of this particular case. He's talking he is talking about the nitty gritty. No one has been arrested or charged in relation to the little girl's disappearance, but that doesn't mean it couldn't happen at some point. We uh, make ourselves available to both sheriff's office and the TBI to to advise them as to the consequences of the next step that they're proposing to take and how we can it's not his job to monitor social media. Now, detectives, TBI, things like that, try, yes, they do. They bring they'll bring that to they'll bring that to the DA, but he, that's not his job. He's not sitting up at night watching Don uh take a crap on a live. He's just not. And he's by the way, he's done it twice. Do it to where if there is a eventually a prosecution what they gather will be something that would be that that we could introduce in a court, make sure we cover all those bases. And if an arrest ever does take place, that's when Armstrong will look at what charges can be filed. If it ever got to the point where uh, we were ready to consider charges, then of course they would talk to me about what charges and who to charge. And uh, a case like this would uh, generally go to a grand jury if it ever got to that point. A grand jury and it's not one of the it's not one of those cases where they go, well, we got a grand jury coming here in June or we got one coming in July when they're ready. They will convene a grand jury. Is, is that how you take it? Yeah, I mean, the also that what he's projecting here is he stands ready to counsel legally within the laws of Tennessee to both TBI and Hawkins County. So. It sounds like both of those agencies have parallel things happening. One, and so he stands ready. If TBI calls him, he can give him legal counsel. If Hawkins County calls him, he can give them give him legal counsel. And when they get to a position of you know, okay, let's let's start looking at what we have. What's the big picture? What charges do we have? then he'll counsel in relationship to charging. And if there's enough there, then he'll convene a grand jury. And that, and they, and is it true that they can do that at any time? Yeah, they could, they can, you know, you have a pool of uh, jurors that you pull from, you assemble them and majority of them are in secret anyway. Right. And, and so there you go. I mean, so I, one thing that I've been hearing and and uh, a source of optimism amongst people, and I understand why. And by the way, this happened again last June, where everybody was like, "Well, it's you know, grand jury's coming up, grand jury's coming up." Not it doesn't it doesn't mean it does it doesn't mean that there won't be a grand jury. It's just they're not waiting for the standard on the docket stuff. You know, they're not going to mix. I just don't think that they would mix in stolen tractors with Summer's case because of the severity of of the case, the charges. The I mean, it it would be quite um, quite an ordeal, to be honest with you. And 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 that's why they do these things privately. Yeah, and and it, you saw evidence of that just in the recent Murdoch trial. Right. They they took him on for the murders and now they're going after him for all the financial stuff. They didn't right. do it at the same time. Nope. No, because you don't want to you don't want to overcomplicate things. And and every single person that's talked about this case talks about how 
incredibly complicated it is, I'm assuming because of the children and obviously because summer is missing, uh, you know, and then I, I heard a clip that I had never heard before when they were talking about CPS is also investigating the disappearance, which I find completely interesting because why would CPS get involved in that specific section if they didn't believe her disappearance had something to do with their ongoing case? Well, CPS's responsibility is the health, safety, and welfare of the children. So they're not directly investigating the disappearance of Summer. They're investigating the totality of the circumstances, either pre, during, and after the incident. So what led up to anything you know, before summer disappeared. They could be looking into all of that, and it could have been ongoing for quite some time. And then, of course, when summer does disappear, now they have to step in and say, okay, what about the three boys? What What is their state of affairs here? It's it's their responsibility to see that. And then, you know, now that they the children are in protective custody and have been for quite some time, you know, CPS's responsibility is to make sure that they are mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually sound and able to function in foster care and or adoption or be brought back to the parents uh, by recommendations to the courts after hundreds and hundreds of hours of counseling and forensic interviewing by experts. Right. And, and, and so another thing is, you know, when children are taken into custody and there's there are crimes that they're investigating they absolutely do not just take those kids in one day and say hey uh what do you know it's not how it works they they have to work with the children they have to make sure the children are okay they have to work you know whatever mental anguish and and heartache that they're going through and by the way Make no mistake, at the age that those children are, it, it is a crazy transition. It's it's terribly confusing. There's so much, and there's three boys, three of them. We're not talking about one. We're not, you know, that's there's three of them here. Okay, each in a different mental state, each in a different uh, point in their in their childhood. Um, now, what I have found just completely shocking is, and I'll show you this, you know, Don does talk about the boys often. He talks, he's criti He's openly criticized CPS. He's openly criticized. I mean, and this is kind of an ongoing thing now, Chris. I mean, this is what he's, he's. He hates Hawkins County. He hates CPS. He said that he should have never turned his children over. From what I understand, he was told that he had 24 hours to turn the children over uh, or he's going to jail. That's from what I understand. And that wasn't an option. He, he had no option. He doesn't get to say, oh, you know what? I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm bummed that I turned my kids over. Well, no, you know, you had to. That that's it, it, was, it wasn't a choice. Go ahead. It, it wasn't a choice. So and then but but look at this here. And and I'm so I'm completely baffled that they, they haven't gotten in trouble for this, but maybe they're just counting them up. I don't know. Uh if you look at it here, uh it says uh the, the, this is the gag order. This is <laughs> the front page of that gag order. It's ordered that all parties to this action are hereby prohibited from discussing this matter or the children with the media or any other non-essential person entity and or uninvolved or dis, uh, dis in, disinterred parties, dis, no disinterested, disinterred parties and or persons. So what do you think about, uh, what do you think about that? How, how do you not get in trouble for that? Well, that's up to, you know, that we don't know. He hasn't, we don't know that the courts, you know, have called him, you know, somebody from the investigations team saying, or somebody from the courthouse, you know, hey, Judge Jones wants to talk to you. Well, we don't know that. 
but we can the fact that he keeps mentioning it while he goes on all these you know tirades every once in a while but you know the the system has to work and the system the reason it has to work is it has to work in a variety of different directions it has to work for summer it has to work whether we like it or not for candace grandis and don okay and it has to work so that it could be presented before a jury and if they're not guilty in any way shape or form then the system has to work to show that right and that gag order is in place to prevent the system from not working and there's only a couple of people that can violate it and it's definitely not anybody on youtube outside of you know the parties involved yeah, well, that's funny because people say, well, you're not supposed to talk about the boys. I say, well, I, I'm I'm not under any gag order. It's not that gag order is not for me. Now, I I, I want to respect, you know, I'm not going to give out any info. I don't have any information, but I wouldn't give out any information, their current state or, you know, who they're with. I don't I don't care about that because that's not my business. Um, it's it's really nobody's business. They're kids. They're, they're being taken care of. But that, that's not that gag order wasn't written for you or I or YouTube or social media <clears throat> or even Tim Mullen, which they should write a gag order for that guy. Which, by the way, you know, there's a gag order for Brian uh, Koberger also. So let's not talk about him. OK, for now on, anybody on YouTube, don't talk <laughs> about Brian Koberger. There's right. a gag order. OK, right. I think people get it now. Yeah, yeah. The gag order is isn't for the media. And by the way, how many times did when you were investigating crimes and murders and did you avoid the media because you were like, we don't want this leaked because they'll leak it and there's nothing we can do about it when they do. Yeah, ten thousand percent. We used to say you don't want to see your case above the fold, right? And Which that's is- what Hawkins County's doing. Right. You remember what above the fold means on the newspaper? The, uh, oh, the the, t- the headline. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you, you didn't want your case up there. So you kept your mouth shut. It's crazy. It, it's it's really it, it's really strange to, to think that 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 is something that they would violate. But I I do think that every time they do this. It was kind of like when Leilani Simon, every time she lied to the investigators, and she did it a lot, uh, they nailed her on every single one of them. They didn't arrest her before that. They could have arrested her for lying uh, when they knew that she was lying, and they they did because they checked it out, but they let her keep lying. They let her keep doing the things that she was doing until they, when they found the, when they found young Quentin Simon in the in the way that they did, which was completely awful and, and just a total disregard for your own child's life and, and, and the most disrespectful type of thing that you could do to your child. Do you, um, do you know what the investigators love in all in all honesty? Don talking and the media manager. Yeah, I know. I've noticed that they love I've it. Kinda, it, yes, of course they do. Uh, because at some, every day when, you know, things go out there and it goes into, you know, crazy land, there's a, there's a screenshot of it. And at some point, all those screenshots come back to tell a story. And it also potentially could put people who are close to the circle within the circle as accessory after the fact. And so they love it when, you know, people don't know what they're doing. Mm. It's great stuff, to be honest with you. You just never know. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've thought about that as, as well. It's kind of like the keep them talking thing. And, and now, is he supposed to be talking? No. Should he be talking? No. Have I told him before? Like the worst thing that you can do is go on YouTube. Yes. Does he care? No. Um, and it, it, to me, it sounds like, you know, he's, so this, this is from, this is from a, uh, 
This is a sound bite about Don just recently within the last week. Tell me what you think about this. So it's just, it's up to God, bro. Not, not only I mean, does CPS see this stuff, they're in the chat. I know they are. I'm not in control of my life at all, but I know that God has the power and you mark my words. So I'm going to say this on your live that God has, and I'm man, I don't, I really, honestly, I'm scared to death that I don't know what's going to happen next. It's an interesting statement. I think, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, it's, there's not much to say. I mean, he, in terms of the gift that keeps on giving, uh, everything, you know, goes back to a holy concept. And, you know, it's in the Lord's hands. I agree. It's in the Lord's hands. And, you know, at some point, there will be a reckoning. Yeah. And, but CPS is on the side of the children. They're not against the children. Right. And they work very, very hard to protect the children. And if it's, I always, I'm always amazed that he's struck with, you know, blaming the CPS for the condition of the boys, for the condition. I mean, just look at the house right there in the video. Is this any environment for four children? And in terms uh, of its construction, <laughs> go ahead. No, no, absolutely not. And yeah. and that's where you got a lot of the blame from Don and Candace. They said that you railroaded them by doing an interview. Yeah, well, whatever. That, that, that they were agreed to, but that you didn't, did you, I mean, you didn't do this to their house. You, you didn't do this to their children. None of us did. None of us, you know, Don Don blames YouTube for the boys being taken. And I think Candace does too. And that none of that is true. That's just not it's just not true. Um and you know, it, as it, somebody who's been accused of 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 being involved, you know, like Don would say, I think you had something to do with this or you had to, that's just what they do. That's what he does. He blames a lot of people. If if it helps secure the safety of those three children still in that environment, uh, sign me up. Sign me up. Right. Uh, well, in I'll, this video, she accuses the tree trimmers or not accuses them, but says, yeah, they could have something to do. You know, I was wondering if they had something to do with it's almost just like throwing stuff against the wall. Let's see what sticks. You know, we'll see what they say going forward. It's uh, we, at some point, there's going to be so much, you know, water in the in the uh, river, and the dam is going to overflow. Yeah, and that's what the authorities are doing. They're taking their time. What do you think about them being in a? Now they haven't officially moved. But what do you think about them being in another state? Is that is to, is that to you at all? I mean, the, the people know where they are. They're not. I don't think that they're hiding where they are. Um, does that does that concern you at all? Yeah. Stop the video right there for a second. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Look at that environment. I mean, just honestly, just take. A second, and 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 now tell yourself, four children lived in this environment. Okay, I'm not a CPS, uh, you know, <laughs> worker in any way, shape, or form. But isn't it interesting? The first order of business from CPS was clean your house. What we used to do on check the welfare cases, we would go look at the children, we'd lift to make sure there aren't any bruises or obvious injuries to the child. We would, you know, go look in the refrigerators, go look in the pantry, make sure there's enough adequate food, 
et cetera. And if it looked like there was a problem, then officers had discretion under health and safety code uh, to take the children themselves. I can't tell you how many kids I used to take and put into Casa de Amparo uh, in, you know, where I, my jurisdiction. And this environment in of itself would be grounds for child neglect. Because there, you know, when I, when we see the, the stairwell going in the back and, you know, it's like, what? How did this all come about? And so if I'm responsible for putting, you know, this video up, which I am, I take full credit for it. Good job. Meaning, you know, okay. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, what, what do you want to do? That that's probably that that's probably the cleanest that house had been in a while. To be honest well, with I you, think, I think it's cleaner now because the court did order them, you know, take care of it, and maybe it was played in a CPS hearing. You know, well, we don't know, but if it was, good. Yeah, it's not something. It's not something that you. It's not something that people should be upset about or, you know, what, what people can be upset about whatever they want. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. Look at the wires. Look at the wires dangling from the ceiling. <laughs> Here's a call coming in. You know, a kid walking through, you know, the room with a, an aluminum baseball bat. Boom. Electrocution. We don't know, but those are wires. Those are all, what kind of wires are they? I don't see all the TVs. I mean, there's multiple TVs in that room. That's like, those are housing. That's like electrical lighting. Yeah, and the They're live. They're, a lot of those is probably, and I doubt that they're even capped, but if they are capped, it's, it's super dangerous. It really is. Yeah, it's coming out of the walls. And, and I don't know what kind of, wires they are if they were hot or whatever i just the i remember when i walked in there i was like huh seen this before right but anyway right. what was your question again i i diverted i don't i don't remember but i i do know when so when when you were there in their house <clears throat> and and by the way can you can you really just tell people by the way how you ended up at on 110 Ben Hill Road that day? Like, it, can you just explain how that happened? Because I think people think that you were like, were like, oh, yeah, let's head here. That, and then this is not how it happened. Go ahead. No, it, uh, I was in East Tennessee, in Jackson, Tennessee, and I was out there with Francis Gaines, whose son Brian was missing at the time, and I was working with the Jackson... Uh, police department out there, or the sergeant out there. And I was working with the family, the mom. And while I was out there, we got a phone call from Coop from the, you know, because I'm part of the Cold Case Foundation. I was out there on a Cold Case Foundation thing, assignment. And he's like, hey, did you hear about this kid in, you know, Hawkins County? I said, I have no idea, you know, what's going on over there, to be honest with you. But uh, you had you what? been to Hawkins County before? N no, <laughs> no. And so. So anyway, he's like, you know, hey, you know, maybe there's something out there that uh, you can help because of your background. And remember, my background is is kids. And I said, well, you know, we'll, we'll see how it, we see how it unfolds. So believe it or not, I got hold of the church and I spoke with Robin Lane and I said, Hey, uh, what's going on with this? You know, cause I, by that time I had looked in the news and saw that Don had done, you know, press conferences and a variety of other things. And I said uh, to Robin, I said, hey, you know, I'm so-and-so, such-and-such. Can we meet? And I met them at the church. I met her there. 
And that was that first interview that I did with her. And I asked her, I said, can you introduce me to the parents? That's how I got involved. Robin introduced me to Candace and I spoke to her just, or she spoke to her briefly on the phone and said she was coming down to meet me. So Candace drove to the church. And if you go back and you look at the waterhole video, you'll see that we're talking outside of the church in the parking lot at her car. And I introduced myself, told her who I was, and asked her if we could talk and if I could help. And if I could bring the team in, if that was something they wanted, or and if they didn't, you know, we're out of here. I'd go talk to TBI or whoever. But, you're, but your job is... The, the, you're the public relations guy to start with. You're the one that makes the initial contact, correct? Right. I'm the director of law enforcement relationships for the Cold Case Foundation. Right. So so you get a call from the head of the Cold Case Foundation, which is Greg Cooper. Correct. He says, hey, there's something going on in Tennessee, East Tennessee. I know you're out that way. Why don't you, can you go check it out? See, see what's going on. See if they need help. <clears throat> Uh, meet the parents. You had no preconceived notions about what was going on. No, none. Right. And then, you know, these interviews came from that. Oh, no, East Tennessee. You're right. I was in West Tennessee in Jackson. Okay. So, but you were, you were in the state. You were just on the other side. Correct. And Don, and, and Amy King says, and Don avoided you the whole time you were there. Oh yeah. The whole time. He never, he didn't come down to the church. In fact, I spent four days there wanting to speak with Don and he avoided me all four days until um, I got into Nashville. I was I went to Nashville and by this time I had been contacted by uh, you know Mary's daughter or Jeannie's daughter because I guess she was on some channels, some YouTube channels and she called me and said, Hey, you know, can we talk to you? And I said, yeah, sure. Are you family? And she goes, yes, we're distant, you know, family. My mom is, you know, so-and-so Jeannie and my aunt is Mary, Miss Mary. I said, yeah, I absolutely love to talk to you. And so we chatted it up a little bit. And this is when it was revealed to me that, you know, Don had maybe had been involved with some things when they were younger and that they were worried about summer. And I said, well, that's interesting. And so the next day as I was leaving, and by the way, I was leaving Tennessee at that point because I'd done this interview that you're seeing here. And what we do is we take this all back and we put it in front of a panel of experts Uh, literally a Zoom wall of like 15, 20 people. And we analyze the information. Uh, But this one was unique because I got a link from TBI because I told them, I said, hey, I got, I have this um, interview and I uploaded the video to that link that they sent me. Go ahead. Chris, we have a lot of viewers from Tennessee, and just over the wire about 22 minutes ago, there is an amber, an active amber alert um, <clears throat> for, uh, let's see, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation is, in, uh, okay, excuse me, it's an endangered child alert uh, from another kid missing in Hawkins County. Uh, emergency officials are asking the public to be on the lookout for four-year-old Dalton Drennan, who was last seen near the Sandy Valley Road area near Rogersville. It's believed Drennan walked away from his home and maybe with a yellow Labrador retriever, according to TBI. Um, he is wearing a gray How to Train Your Dragon t-shirt, khaki shorts, and no shoes. Drennan is about three feet tall, weighs about 40 pounds, curly blonde hair, brown eyes. Anyone who sees him is asked to call 911 and um, there he is. There's that young man that they're looking for out of Hawkins County. Um, so I just 
I know that we have a lot of Tennessee viewers, so I wanted to um, throw that in there. Please share that out on social media. That's how these things work. Um, so I really, truly hope that this young man is found and found quickly. Um, okay. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no, it's okay. You've got three hours. <laughs> no, I mean, no, tell no, the that, tell the authorities tell three hours with this little boy. That's called the 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 first three, and, and whenever they put out an Amber Alert, now this is an endangered child alert. Is it an Amber Alert or an endangered child alert? They're two different separate. They're two it, separate things. This is an endangered child alert. Okay, so now they're, they're notifying the public. An Amber Alert notifies the world. Right. Correct. So this is not an Amber Alert so, right now. So then... Again, That's what it, happened with Summer's case too, right? Um, I don't remember if they put it out right away. I believe it was... An, I believe she was, she was put out as an endangered I child at first. I thought Amber Alert and that Michael Vaughn was an endangered child. It was upgraded, I believe. Um, after I believe, Yes, after like that night or something, she started out as an endangered child, and then it was upgraded to an Amber Alert. Okay. Right. So, um, anyway, so the, I mean, yeah. So they're they're asking the people of the community of Kingsport, and by the way, like I said, that we have a lot of viewers from there that are watching this right now. So share it out on your social media. Keep your eyes open. It, it, it definitely can. It makes a difference. You know, we got we got 1,400 people here watching, and I know a lot of them are from that area. And so hope he's found safe. If I hear anything while we're on the air, we'll go back and, and update it. Um, but I just wanted to... I wanted to show that because <clears throat> I thought that, that I think that's that's important. So b back here, this is this is where I really because the stairs have been a point of interest, and I know that there's a speculation, but I mean, if this is really, if this is really how the children got down the stairs, if that is, I don't even know what the hell that is, Chris. Is that a cabinet? Yeah, it's like, a it's just like a, a bar. Cover. It's a bar over or whatever a hole in the a hole in the ground. A hole in the floor. And I want I, you can tell is that thing s s bolted to the ground? I have no idea. Right. I'm sure it was nailed to the ground cuz when I went in it I, you know, I I used it to stable my you know, to be a little stable. Were you a little nervous going down there? Uh, let me, you know, I was not sure what's down there. And and I didn't know the totality of the players at this point. So uh, you can bet I'm processing. And, you know, ladies first. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You're a gentleman through and through. And so I'm thinking... Hey, is there a way we can get around? Uh, you didn't want to go down that way. You wanted so you wanted to find another way down that risk, risk assessment at its finest. <laughs> it's called you know, where's yeah. my gun? You can't, you can't, you can't die on a plane if you don't go on planes. You know what I'm saying? And I've been in enough, uh, you know, crawl spaces like this to know there could be not good things in the in the den for right. lack of a better term. I'm, I, to be, I'm very impressed with your agility. <laughs> like a, do what you got to do for the kids. You're like a, you're like a gazelle. I mean, if I would have gotten hurt down there in any way, shape or form, you know, the only person I would have known was Karen outside in the truck. Mm -hmm. and, but yeah. she wasn't known until I got down there, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I just very acrobatic of you. Um, and look at all these wires. And then okay. there's somebody there's somebody flashing somebody on the TV. Now that isn't. I'm not saying that that's that. That's one of those like um, infomercials or something or or 
it, somebody told me it was girls gone wild or something like that. I don't think I don't think so. I, I think what that is is it's like one of those TV's most shocking, you know, and they they put all kinds of stuff on there. Um like um oh god, there was a there was a channel that did it all the time. I can't remember, but I don't think it's girls gone wild. Um I think it was something else. Whatever it was, it was for adults. I can well, tell you go that. Back, go back to that for a second. I want you to see something. On go the back. on the video? No, 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 not the video. I could care less about the video. <laughs> of, okay. of the room. Go into the go into the room. Yeah, come down. Okay, get ready to stop it. Look like Mardi Gras. When I'm this is definitely look at she's naked. Yeah, that I is, think I, that's not a commercial. All okay. Right. Okay, keep going, keep going, but go slow, go slow, because you'll see it just light up for a second. Keep going. Okay, stop. Whoop. Shoot. That's all right. Did you see that thing in the corner? Yes, I did, actually. Let me slow it down just a little bit. Why was the TV on and nobody's home? Well, we have our theories, but nobody knows. Okay, are you talking about that thing? No, keep going. You're going to see it to the left, okay? The light, okay, stop. Okay, right there. And you're talking about this right here? And look to the left, there's a pipe. Right here coming down okay to the right there you'll see like the little dark spot all of that okay yeah that's a mattress just thrown in the middle of the room on the floor or there do you, do you remember if there are blankets on it it it, it just it, it just looked like a you know a problem but more importantly look up on the ceiling See all that white area up there? Yeah, that that looks like open installation. I couldn't tell insulation. what it was when I first saw it, but it was wide open, and it was like, you know, you got to be kidding me. Is that like that fiberglass insulation? I, I, it looked like, I can't, uh, to be honest with you, I couldn't tell when I first saw it. And I've gone over this video a hundred times trying to figure it out. But what was interesting is it was, as you can tell, it was pitch black down there on that side of the room. Okay. And it was almost as if, you know, I have my own theory that, you know, and he gets mad at me whenever I say it, that he was at the house and she called him from the dollar store. And he hayakued out there, out that door, and uh, knew that I was there. That's just my opinion. I could be a hundred thousand percent wrong. He's he says I'm wrong, and so okay, well, great. Well, I don't have any evidence that he was. Okay, so, so here's the thing, though. Think about it like this, and uh, think about it like this: the children have been taken at this point, correct? Yes. Candace wasn't home. She was at the church, right? Yes. Maybe they did just leave the TV in the basement on, or maybe somebody was there watching TV and took off. I'm just saying it's an empty house with the TV on. I mean, you t I don't know. Something it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to. Say. It's hard to say. Uh, you love it. <laughs> you know. Oh, that's funny. It it was like when you know my mind is going a thousand percent here because I'm looking for you know, things that I would spot in relationship to, you know, the kid stuff. And so I was focused on her, i.e. Summer, the door. I knew the door was an issue. And as it turns, she's already in. So she's behind me. And so for officer safety, that's not a good thing anyway. So immediately I wanted to get right in real time. You'll see, I just kind of scanned that room and then I came right back around because I don't like anybody behind me. Right. Without my eyes on. Right. And 
Well, there know. are there are people. Do, yes, that's true. There are people that do leave their TV on all the time. I'm not saying that. I'm just you know, just saying. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know. But um, I don't know. It, it, it's it's just. But but anyway, this is where people were sleeping, not just summer, right? And and there's no there's no animals in this room at this point, right? Okay. Makes All sense. the doors and windows are secured, and they stop. This is the other side of the room with the bunk beds. And the mattress, another mattress on the floor. So the Crazy. whole the whole family sleeps in this environment. But this is what they call her her bedroom, and, and it's 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 it kind of begs it kind of begs belief to be honest. Right. I mean, I, I don't even know what to say about this room. It, it's, it's not a room. It's a basement. It's a dingy basement. It's not a. Just had just had rain, thunder, moisture. Just just add all of those ingredients, heat, and that's the environment. Chris, whenever you come on this show, people ask and, and people ask your theory. And I never ask you your theory because you don't necessarily have one, but you do have one statement that you have said continuously throughout this case. And what 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 is that? I've not left the house. Meaning this is meaning that's this is where it all took place. Yeah, I mean, just look at this poor little boy today. The Amber Alert comes out that he's outside walking potentially with his dog. Endangered. Endangered. Okay. In this case, a mother calls and says, the child vanished out of the house. Okay. You see, you see, now you take that victim risk continuum, high, medium, low, right? Environment, situation, circumstance, and you say to yourself, okay, low, i.e., What's the what's the situation? They're at the house. What's the environment? It's it's horrible. Okay, but but they're still at the house. She's still at the house. Right. Right. What's the circumstance? She disappears from the house. Okay. Is that a low, medium, or high risk in terms of the environment situation? Well, those are all low risk because she's at her house, quote unquote. Okay. Where at her house? In her bedroom. Okay. Well, this is her bedroom. Okay. So you can kind of move that lever this way in the circumstance, in the, the situation, right? Move it between a low and a medium because obviously this bedroom appears to be pretty disheveled. Okay. But all in all, everything still focuses back towards she's in the house. So that means statistically there is a higher probability, and this is what we teach law enforcement, and it's and it's worldwide because right now those law enforcement officers looking for that other little boy right now as we speak okay are are putting that little boy through the victim risk continuum and they're asking themselves is he outside yes yeah, at a high low high medium or a low risk activity that is a high risk activity based on his age okay so they're going this way so it's possible there's a higher probability that he could run into a stranger and be a victim of opportunity. But it's a lower possibility for Summer because she's at the house. It would be somebody within her circle of influence and or potentially even, you know, somebody in the family. So you stay there until you eliminate that circle and that's why the cops have said everybody's on the table and it was and they also said that in the in the dispatch call that um like there was there were people saying you know that summer was last seen 
on, you know, leaving the house or wandering away from the house or, or whatever. But that's not what the parents said. That That's not what was reported. That's not what Don and Candace still say. And by the way, I, I have a lot of hope that this young man, if nothing nefarious has happened and has wandered off, will be found. If the people that are in charge of him call the call the investigators, call for help as soon as they realize he was missing, they'll have a much better chance of finding him. And it you'll see the the just the stark contrast in, in these cases. I, I I have a feeling that this young man will be found and probably found safely. That that is my hope. As long as Nothing obviously nefarious was going on that they should be able to find this young man. Yeah, let's keep him in our prayers and, and keep the the first responders in our prayers and the public because the public quickly will determine, especially with the sun going down, of whether or not this child could be found safely. And the dog is going to be a big, big, big deal. So you find the dog, you find you the find boy. the you find the boy. You a, you absolutely and will. if the dog is separated from the boy, now you have a bigger problem. The problem has has you know gotten really big. That dog could be protecting that child. Yeah, and we've seen that actually. Not it was it was pretty recent too, where a dog slept with the his the young kid all through the night and wouldn't leave its side. You know, and so. Um, I, I do like, I, I have, I have hope that, you know, that's how these things work. If you get a hold of whoever it is, you need to get a hold of immediately. The, the probability of them being found is much higher. And by the way, kids that go missing typically are found. Yeah. I mean, the majority of missing children, just I'll give you an example. You know, you saw, we saw, just last week where 266 kids were found okay yeah every one of them was accounted for either as a runaway a parent child abduct you know uh, parent custody problem and there were four walkaways that they didn't know about so every one of those children was not a stranger abduction not one of them okay so that right. tells you that summer is is even more is a rarity yeah and they and they've even they've actually yeah and they typically are found soon but yes correct and and it is a it is a rarity now check check this out say this happens and this carries on till tomorrow and all of a sudden the news gets a hold of the parents past and it and it's looking bad uh speculation will turn on people. And I'm, and by the way, I hope that that's just not the case. I don't want that to happen. I, as of right now, all we know is this young man wandered off and that's, that's all we know. And they want to find him. I'm just saying that the longer, you know, it's been two years, two years from a little girl just disappearing off the face of the earth. That doesn't happen. It, it's, it's not something that, that happens now. Like I said, I have I have high hopes that this um, this young man will be found and that his parents are out there looking for him like everybody else. Um, so I do, yeah. People, kids wander off. That is that is the truth. And people will say, "Well, then Summer could have wandered off." But you know, kids typically respond to their names. They typically respond to, uh, you know yelling for, for them so let's hope kids do wander off and we have michael poor little monkey wandered off yes he did and he was put into a high-risk situation yes and that's that is what's really scary that i mean that it's all scary but yes somebody said 41 minutes from summer well it's in the same county yeah it's in hawkins county 41 minutes is is it's a ways off, but it's, yeah, the, you know, let's not start to try and connect the two. Let's just, you know, this, I know where this is headed. 
Um, let me let me get to a couple of these really quick and uh, uh, to the. Uh, so we got a new member, Chloe Jade. Trev time. What's up, Trev? Two of my two of my role models and absolute wonderful guys. Love you, Trevor. Thank you so much. Uh, out and about became a member. Uh, Marlene says we got to have faith that TBI is doing their job. Look how quiet the Cal City boys case was. Then boom, both found guilty. Keep praying for summer. That's a great point. Uh, wink at me. He says, Josh and Chris, my favorite true crime duo. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm guessing I'm the 51%. You're the 49%. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, vet girl. Amen. Child safety. First vet girl, a champion for, uh, summer to come home. She has been since day one. Um, this is a great question. Uh, I still have the burning question. Many of us have why no charges for all the violations. My personal opinion is that they're just, I mean, what are they going to do? Haul Don in every day. He violates something. I think that they just got to go, Hey, he did it again. Ding, put it on the books, you know? Cause I mean, he's not necessarily putting anybody in immediate danger, but he's breaking a court order. Every time he brings up the children, every time any, it doesn't matter what he brings up about them. It's violating a court order. How the hell he doesn't understand that. And by the way, he's been reamed by the judge for it on multiple occasions and he continues to do it. And so I think they're like, well, what are we going to do? Just like charge them with this. And then, you know, or no, we let's, let's just, let's bake a cake of charges here. We got a whole bunch of crap that we can get them on. What sticks will stick and what doesn't we have to, you know, get rid of. They could dismiss those charges at some point. You don't, you don't know. You have no idea if he's even charged with that stuff. I think that he will be charged with it because I don't think that the court's going to just sit back and let him do whatever he wants. I do not believe that for that. That's going to happen. I just, I don't think they'll let it slide. We we've got a couple of indications that there are some, you know, things cooking on the horizon. Number one, the length of time it's taken with the boys. And, you know, the fact that they, the state has a responsibility based on even that grand jury um, rule where everybody has to be stable. We don't know what's going on with these other three kids. Right. And so until that is stabilized, whatever that is, they know that Don and Candace and potentially others are still going to do what they do. Right. And sometimes a case gets stronger, not weaker, uh, based on, you know, other people getting involved. You know, there's there's no greater um, there's no greater uh, evidence than having your mom say, burn the note. <laughs> yeah, I know. D unbelievable. Yeah, that, that, uh, Mary Hartman. Uh, hi, Mary. How are you? And she says, Josh, they already lost their kids. Donnie told my dad last week they gave up their parental rights last time they went to court. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, not surprising. Um, they've, they've denied that it was official. Um, now maybe yeah. there's a grand jury taking place. Yeah, well, look, they, they meet on June 1st, don't they? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But but that that is part of the process. What the the separation of you know any kind of custody. Because if they had any rights and they were charged, that makes that makes everything even more difficult. I mean, yeah. what are they gonna do? You know, if they if they have legal rights. You have to get rid of those rights before you can move on and with the with testifying. If that's indeed what the children are going to have to do uh, against their parents, and by the way, that is a psychological hill that has to be climbed, and it's just you know, and 
And if, in fact, it did go to a uh, grand jury and, you know, things took place there, and let's say the children were involved, hypothetically, in terms of telling a story. Mm -hmm. All right, number one, those kids have to be on solid ground. The state's not going to put them through it unless they're on solid ground. And now if the parents have, you know, given up their parental rights, so now um, the fact that if that is the case, which it sounds like, and Mary knows, right? Sure. If that's the case, then hopefully those parents will do the right thing if they ever were, if charges were ever to come and not put those kids through a court trial. And I'm going to go on the record today. If they were ever charged and those boys were instrumental in any way, shape, or form towards that, whether it's child neglect or whatever the deal is, then the parents need to, you know, cowboy up and take it one for the team because it will show, it will tell you a whole bunch about you know putting those kids under more pressure about what the who those individuals really are correct yeah um chris and all that clutter did you see liquor bottles can't imagine them keeping up with them you know to be honest with you autistic and i love your name um I, I didn't notice them. I'm not, so I don't want to guess. Uh, I will tell you this. What I did notice is just the, the, the fact that the whole place was just disheveled. And it was, it was as if, I mean, think about this for a second, right? That is the environment the summer allegedly says, I want to go down into. Okay. And, you know, I've I've been a I've been in you know in law enforcement for quite some time and I've gone down into a lot of places and you know turned corners and really dark rooms. I had to take a deep breath when I got to that thing and she pointed it out. I went, "Oh wow, look at this!" And I had no idea it existed. And for a little girl of her innocence. To, you know, just to arbitrarily say, yeah, I want to go down there by myself and play. And I mean, and just when I got there, it was dark and dingy. And, and if this is, you know, any indication of what it looked like that day, I, again, I, I don't see her saying to the brothers, I want to go downstairs and play in the basement, you know. When you have a when you have people, um, you know, playing. Well, we put into her mind bears and and you know, craziness out out in the woods. You know, a child's imagination is going to go wild. Uh, and what is she going to do? Sit in that dark room down there, and all of a sudden, you know, have this moment where she decides. Oh, this is really comfortable. Nobody's down here. I'm playing with my toys and it's pitch black or whatever. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Soggy bread, as I say. Soggy bread. Yeah. Not right yeah. So, uh, autistic me, thank you very much. I appreciate the question and the donation. Hi, Chris. I'm curious if Ellie's hair stood up on the back of their neck in out of the house at 110 Ben Hill road. I know you can't give any specifics. I'm curious if you're, Oh, your L E hairs. Yes. Um, yeah, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I left my weapon with Karen. And the first thing that came to my mind is where's my weapon. K dogs. Where's my Glock? <laughs> yeah. Where's my Glock? Exactly. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's what came to my mind. It's like, Holy crap. What am I going into down here? And, and again, you know, that I just kind of reiterate what I just talked about. I just wonder if each boy saw her at a different place, the door swing center, and that's why multiple places given for summer. You know, uh, Melissa, that's a great 
that's a great thought because first of first of all to to for a child to have to recall that kind of stuff isn't going to be easy um and who knows what they were who who knows what they were if they were told to do say something who knows if they were you know influenced you know i always go back to when Don was trying to talk to Josie and they, and, and that's when like it, it basically all stopped, you know, they, because they weren't supposed to be doing that. Like at that point they did have, uh, I always just wonder what that conversation was, you know? Yeah. We don't know. We, it definitely didn't, um, uh, at DLR, right. Didn't look right. Well, he, it was it was something that he wasn't supposed to do. He wasn't even allowed to talk. I don't know if he did talk. I don't know what he talked about. He says that he was just asking him how he was doing, but he could have done that in the open with everybody there. Um, you know, but you know, I I just I don't think uh, I I think that it's weird uh, that he would try and separate the oldest boy and have a private conversation with him when he was clearly told not to do it. Well, if we look at if we look at you know just the the dynamics, and I love Mary, I love Jeannie, and just everybody on, on that side of the family. I mean, they're yeah, there's some there's some you know craziness all around the dynamics of this family, and you know, but those girls did not ask for what happened to them because they their mother married into it. Okay. And you know they had their they have their own Gethsemane that they that they are dealing with, and that in of itself, you know, is is another day. And, and when Mary's ready and Jeannie's ready, they'll talk more about it. Um, but that in of itself, they they were victims. And so now, if you look at those dynamics of what how Don was raised, and how Don raised his other son who is a 290 in Utah, okay, uh, RSO. In Rack them. You know what I mean? It, it, then that means the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And that those types of behaviors typically first start, the embryo of them first start with inside of, um, you know, those family dynamics within those walls. Dot says it's not impossible. Don Wells lied to his father. No, it's not impossible at all. That's true. That's true. Um, what would be the point of him lying about that? I, I truly don't know. I mean, you know, who knows? Whatever. Whatever. It's just what it is. What it is. He, I, be, I believe it just because. I mean, if it hasn't happened yet, it's certainly going to happen. But I, it, you know, I mean, he did tell me. That that he that that's what they were gonna do. He told me that himself. So why would he lie about it? I I just don't. And by the way, I think that the only reason he brought it up or even talked about it was because he was kind of pushed into the corner uh, to to have to talk about it. If that makes any sense. Right. And now now then we're not talk about it, but admit to it because he kind of was like using that as we're trying to get the boys back. Or, and Candace as well. We're trying to get the boys back. We're trying to get the boys back. We're working on ourselves. We're working on ourselves we're trying to get the boys back. But once that goes away, what more do they have to lean on? Nothing. They're in Arkansas now. Well, and that tells you that then everybody needs to step back for a moment that has been, you know, enabling and realize that the state said you are unfit as parents. I mean, wait, what? No, the uh, the the state the state has said you're unfit. If that's the case, you're 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 not supposed to have kids. Is what the state said. The state of State of Tennessee made a decision over everybody's objection on YouTube <laughs> uh, that, no, you know what? You should not have children. 
Wait, you're telling me that they didn't take into consideration what we have to say? Unfortunately, yeah, that is. And the by tr- the way, I'm not on the side of, yeah, give the children back. I would never do that. Never. Well, the state's in the business of protecting the children, not, no. enab- not enabling the children to the parents. Right. I, it's, it's just, a, it's really, truly amazing that when even just looking at this kind of stuff, like, I'm not talking about like their pr- parenting skills, you know, like, hey, little Johnny, sit down and eat your vegetables and we'll do your homework after this. I'm just talking about a place to live, right? Couple that with, uh, you know, some behaviors that we've seen before. Come on, you know, like how, how it's, it's upside down, you know, that, that there are people that think that this would be an acceptable way for the children to live. So let, let's, let me put it in maybe a little other simplistic form. You have three puppies and they each have a shock collar and you hand the devices to the parents and say, take care of these puppies. But the state comes in and says, you know, we noticed the burn marks on the necks of the puppies. Have you been using this device? And they say, no, we haven't been using the device. Are we saying we want to leave those puppies with those two people that hold the device? Because if that's what we're saying, then God help us as a society. And that's when we need God at that moment, when we've lost all civility, that we, we were, if we, if we get cringed by thinking about three puppies in a shock collar, and then you see an environment like this, and you know, there are three boys without who potentially emotionally are in a shock collar. Well, you know what? We need to figure that out. We well, you know, get... mm-hmm. Go ahead. one of the, one of the funnier things too, is like, there are people that will watch this. They'll stream this. They'll say, why are you guys talking about the parents? Why are you, what are you doing to the parents? Da, 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 da. Um, but check this out. I'm, I, I'm convinced that, these children didn't need to go back to this house. I have no problem talking about this because I believe so strongly that the, that, that no children should be in that home. I'm open. My, I open myself up to criticism. People say, well, you're bashing it. Well, okay. So be it. Then now let's just call it what it is. Yeah. That's not what I think. I don't, I don't think that they're fit. Uh, well, they don't either. And neither does the state. So stop it. There's no excuse There's no justification. There's nothing. There is nothing that anybody could say to shame me for putting this information out there day after day after day, because it's the, it's what I feel is right. I'm not telling anybody to, to bat, to go after them. I don't want anybody to harass Dawn and Candace. I don't want any of that, but I'm going to tell you what, I also don't want those kids going back and that's how I feel about it. And there's nothing you're going to say that's going to make me feel like um, a bad person by doing this. Matter of fact, I I feel vindicated by the people that criticize us (laughs) because I've seen them. I know who they are, who do this kind of thing. We'd say, no, but I don't care. I don't care. My senses tell me something different just like yours and by the way that it's it's not just mine it's a bunch it's a bunch of people you know it's obvious chris hey go back uh p- drop this comment for a second and go back to that for a minute okay which part uh just a sec going into the family bedroom here on the other side. Uh, it's forward. Go forward. Keep going. Oh, whoop, back. It's behind that. Behind that. Yep. I want to see on that far wall again. Sorry. No. 
um, I got this thing going uber slow. That's okay. I, um, need, I, I need that. Uh, yeah, well, it, it's good that it's going slow because I'm, I'm seeing things that I haven't seen in a while. Like you know, punched holes in the wall. <laughs> well, I don't. See I don't know if that's true or not. I don't see any of that, but uh, you don't I, see those holes in the wall. Which ones? Here. That one, yeah, that one. I saw that one. And there's a few right here too. There was something on that far wall, and I couldn't tell what it was. Then we go. You want me to go back again? No, it's forward. It's it's in the other room. It's in Don's room. Yeah, it's in that room. And I I scan towards the back. Whoops, we're outside. Yeah, maybe. Whoop, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So when it comes back around. I can't tell what that thing is, but when it comes back around to the right, look up on the wall. And there. There. Is that a... I've, I don't recall seeing that. Is that a pipe coming down from the top, or is that a you know, maybe a trophy of some sort, an animal head or something. I can't tell what it is. It just looks like a black blob. It kind of, it kind of does look like a like a deer head or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I couldn't tell what it what it is or what it was. It could I, be a plumbing stack. Yeah, a plumbing stack. There you go. Yeah, it, it's like that black PVC. Okay. Uh, so the, I'm just. It's a drain. Look at nut job here. I just is, what's he doing? Hi, <laughs> He's so cute. He, I like how he uses his pillow of himself. Oh yeah, he's he's like Mr. He's Nuts. a Holly. He's a Hollywood dog. He's hysterical. He is. Love he's him. so he's super cute. Hi, um. Hi. So let me let me get here real quick. Okay, so this. Go back to her closing the door. Okay. Wait a minute. Come on now. Here we go. God, look at how steep that is. Yeah, it was. It's where she. Did she already up. close the door? Yeah, I think so, but that's okay. We're good. She made sure to tell me she wasn't sure. Oh, you want to hear it? Well, I've heard it. Okay, well, let's just keep playing. Tell me, yeah, so. So, so look at the door. Stop. So you got a deadbolt on top. Okay, and a regular door handle on the bottom. Okay. So we don't know if this was changed or if it was the actual setup, but we, we have to suppose that that door was open if a stranger came up that dog path. You know, just use the stranger theory. And all of a sudden found the door open. Ben, some are playing in there. And he had to walk into that room, go into the other room where she would have been playing. And make no noise in any way, shape, or form. Grab her. And now you've got a 50-pound bag of concrete, for lack of a description. And you have to go out that door, that back door there, and take off down that dog path, but close. But while you're here, let's just make sure we close the door while I got the kid in my, you know, my grasp here. Okay. 
And, you know, mom's outside, grandma's outside, three brothers are upstairs. Time to get out of the house with Summer. And, and I need to, we need to run down this dog trail with her. And when I am down at the bottom of the dog trail, I have to have a mode of transportation and it's got to be positioned the correct way because I can't go up the hill. If I go up the hill, I got to turn down and I got to come back down the hill. And that's a high risk maneuver. People would see that vehicle. There were people, you know, around that day. So now the suspect's got a controller, not only in the room, controlling her getting out of the room, control her down the um, um, path, control her into the car, drive the car while controlling her. And then you have a parent say, oh, she ran the house with these boys. I mean, she would just smack them and keep them all in line. They all, they all knew old Summer would, you know, you're not going to do that to Summer. Every single person that I've ever talked to that knew Summer, I spent any time with her or heard talk about Summer, it was that would be the complete opposite of how she, she wouldn't be docile. She wouldn't just let somebody take her. It, it, there would be something, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I mean, kids, you know, children who are, and she's a country girl, this little one. Big time, yeah. You know, and she's, you know, she's got a lot of, a lot of spunk to her. You can see it in all her videos. She's not going to just say, um, you know, here, take me. And, and what became a, um, what became a point of contention early on, they had said the door was locked. And now Candace made it a point in this here to tell me she wasn't sure if it was locked or open. But what she did is she reached down on the bottom and she locked that door handle. So wow. that that in of itself right there, see how she did that? Did just did that? Yeah. So that's the habit. We just witnessed a habit. So now the question is the door was probably locked. So now that puts the suspect going up to the door as a hypothetical, knocking on the door, knowing she's down there, her coming to the door, opening the door for her abductor, and then just, you know, saying, go ahead and take me. You see, that's, this has been the problem with this whole case, is the fact that they said the last time the child was seen, it was in the basement. So now that door becomes significant. And guess what? I think the, I think it's a distraction, personally. It could be, but just think think of the think of this. If it's a distraction with inside of the story, it's the minutia detail that they screwed up on. Right. And they knew they screwed up, and so she needed to fix it. And this was an opportunity for her to fix it. Mm hmm and create more confusion within the conversation. We got a comment there on the screen. There's no evidence Don or Candace had anything to do with someone going missing. I don't believe two drugged out hillbillies could pull this off so perfectly. What did they pull off perfectly? And uh, how do we ha no public evidence? Is that what you mean? By the way, uh, I say this all the time. Circumstantial evidence is evidence. You know, do you have evidence otherwise? Yeah, where's the yeah, where's the evidence that that supports them that they didn't that they're not involved? And just asking. It's a fair question. I, th I mean, I th I think so. I think it's fair. And is the family the fact that they the um, fact are they still cooperating? I know you said uh, obviously you know, Don's there, but like the mother and all those other people, are they still cooperating? No, they're not cooperating right now. 
Hey, I mean, that, that's a fair, that's a fair comment. No question about it. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm just saying on uh, to the contrary. Yeah. What's the evidence to the contrary? Wait, look, that's give us, it. Give us something else that, that can be weighed here in, in all honesty, but give us something else that can be weighed. A deer blind, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just saying that like, when, when they say things like, I don't believe they pulled this off so perfectly, what have they pulled off perfectly? And by the way, hiding a body is not that like, it doesn't take that much skill, to be honest with you. You just need to know the areas. People hide bodies all the time. I said this the other day. I can't remember who I was talking to, but I remember saying this the other day. In most of these cases, they have to cut deals with people because they're like, we need to know where that body is because finding a body is difficult. Not only uh, an adult body, but that that is intentionally hidden. But a child's body, which is way smaller, takes a really long time. Typically, the way that they're found if after searches is some some hunter somewhere, some jogger stumbles upon something that that was washed up uh from a from a rainstorm or a, you know what i mean so that that's what i'm saying like i don't i don't subscribe to this theory that they've pulled off anything perfectly that's just not hold on well i can say this based on a lot of information while well, josh has taken that phone call you know, there's not any evidence that a stranger came up on that property. <clears throat> so that's the first piece of the puzzle that, you know, folks have to consider. You have to consider that from an investigative process. You know, and so if, you ha if folks have evidence that a stranger came up to that property, then immediately call... TBI and tell them that you have that you have evidence that this person came up there or, or yada yada. Right. That's the first phone call. Right. But I can tell you this right now, all indications are it's somebody familiar with that property. Uh, familiar with that property. Just as I, I, I made a, you know, I went out on a limb with Brian Koberger before they caught him and I say, I guarantee you within a thousand percent, somebody knew that house. This guy, this suspect knew that house. And I'm going to say the same thing about this house. This person knows this house. Now the difference is obviously the victimology. The persons that are, that somebody that's stealing or taking a four-year-old is doing it for deviant behavior. They're not doing it just to take her. Right. They're, doing, they're doing it for other reasons. So, um, you know, that has to be considered. Then the second option is an accident and a cover-up. Chris, um, I w we're almost at an hour and 40 minutes. We could go on all night. I got to wrap this up. I appreciate you being here, man. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I hate to end it abruptly, but uh, it's okay. got to wrap her up here. All right, man. I'll see you in a bit. Thank you, Chris. Thank I'm you for being here, everybody. Bye-bye. We're live on the air, so don't say any F's and stuff. But I have to put her on the side and worry about the boys because they're still here. Oh, Nobody's you're not a cop. No, no, you're